Hi everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Before we start, please click subscribe and turn on the notification to avoid missing valuable videos. Also, feel free to drop a comment below. Today, I want to address two questions raised. One of the questions is about incremental load in Excel. The challenge is to scrub information from a website where it gets refreshed every week. Only new information will be published, and old information will be archived. The goal is to download the information to Excel and store the information in the existing dataset. Assume this is the weekly publish information. You will generally import the data using Power Query with the suitable connector or method into Excel. The challenge is every time you refresh the data, you will get the latest one, and the old data will be wiped off. Self-referencing is the key to resolving the challenge. Let's go back to the Power Query Editor. Go back to the previous step, add a custom step, and then rename the step to self-reference. The previous step name is highlighted in the formula bar instead of the presented step name, Navigation. It is a default step name, and the actual name is hidden. Remember the highlighted reference, and we will need it later. Replace the highlighted code with the Excel Current Workbook function. You will get a table provided all the tables, and names ranged within the workbook. The highlighted code tells Power Query to return the row where the value in the name column equals input. Add the code as highlighted to get the table content. Here is the table from Excel. The next step is to append the source table with the loaded table. You will need to manually update the code to highlighted code to the code I mentioned earlier that we need to remember. We have duplication rows now, so we need to select all columns and then remove duplicate rows. The date column contains two different formats. Move the remove duplicate step to the last step, and the problem will be resolved. Let's load it to Excel and test run. Put the source file on the left and the loaded table on the right. Say the source file is now updated with the new value. We then refresh the loaded table. The new value is added to the table. Let's do it one more time. Add new values for the source table. Now refresh the loaded table. Awesome. Let's get on to the next question. The question is about creating a list of dates with a day of the week next to the date. Skip the first step by adding a custom step and name it start date. Replace the highlighted code with the start date. Add another custom step, and name it end date. Replace the highlighted code with the end date. Add a custom step, and name it date. Clear the highlighted code. We want to use the number from function to convert both the start and end dates to number, and use the two dots method to create a list of dates. What we have is a list of numbers. Add a new step and name it format date. We then want to use the list transform function in combination with the date from function to convert the list of numbers to date. Add a new step, and name it format date. Add the list transform function before the format date, and follow by a keyword each. We use each when we want to go through each item and skip the keyword each when we do bulk transform. We want to use the date day of week function to get the day of the week. The first day of week defaults at zero, which is a Sunday. Add curly braces and an underscore as highlighted. We can now use the standard features to convert a list to a table. We then expand the list and add commas as delimiters between date and day of week. Now we want to split the column by comma delimiters. Rename the column header, and we are done. Delete all the steps after the transform step. I want to show you one addition tip. Replace the highlighted code with select, and add equal 1 toward the end of the formula as highlighted. We are now filtering the date, which is only Monday. I have a second thoughts. Perhaps, let me show you how to address the second question in Excel as a Christmas gift. Let's start with the start and end dates. The formula to get a list of dates is the sequence function. I have covered this one much details in another view. I will add the link to the video. Hold Ctrl, Shift and number 8 to select the array. Then, hold Ctrl, Shift and hash to convert to date format. The next step is to get the day of week. 
we will use the weekday function. Point to cell A7, the formula cell, followed by hash. Hash means select the entire array. Select number 2 for the second argument. The next step is using the filter function to filter for only Monday. For the first argument, point it to the date array, followed by a colon, then point it to the day of week array. The second argument is the criteria, point it to the day of week array, followed by an equal sign and number 1. Hold Ctrl and space to select the entire column. Hold Ctrl, Shift and Hush to convert the selection to date format. Here you go. Let's use the formula text function to display all the formulas. I want to use them to show you how to write those three formulas in a single formula with a let function. Name date for the date array, which is the sequence formula. Name day of week for the day of week array, which is the combination of weekday and sequence formulas. The last argument, calculation, combines both the filter and age stack functions. We use the age stack function to combine the date and day of week arrays. Then, we apply criteria to the day of week array. Let's quickly update the format. You will get the same result. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please remember to click like if you like the video. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.